Awesome. Welcome, everyone. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully you see that professionalism in the workplace. Again, my name is Rachel Christensen. I am one of the career educators at the Division of Career Pathways, aka the Career Center. Um, for those of you that might not understand that very long Division of Career Pathways, basically the Career Center. And so we're going to talk a little bit about professionalism in the workplace, a little bit about you know how to present yourself, maybe in an interview, and then what to expect when you go uh, into your internships or into your first jobs. So with that being said, we're going to define a little bit what professionalism is, some workplace etiquette with also workplace communication, a little bit about personal branding, um, how you are branding yourself both when you enter in a room or when you are online. Um, and then uh, also a little bit about remote working because that is something that most of us um, are trying to figure out because of the pandemic. And this is a couple tips that have come our way uh, from different employers. So with that being said, uh, there's not a lot of people here, um, but what I like to do is a word cloud. So if you can, uh, pull.ev.com uh, backslash Rachel C423, or you could text message um, and then text your, uh, what do you think professionalism is? And I'm gonna give this a couple of minutes for you to um, kind of answer what you think professionalism is. Boundary setting, I like that. Role modeling, sophistication, boundaries. I think the communication, I think these all play in, definitely play into professionalism um, in one shape or form. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So according to NACE, which is the National Association of Colleges and Employers, it's knowing work environments differ greatly, understand and demonstrate effective work habits, and act in the interest of the larger community and workplace. And so how does that, that's very broad and it's somewhat big. So we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper about those. So your professional image, it serves as the foundation of a successful relationships. Um, it differentiates you from others in a competitive job market. So whatever your professional image is, and we'll talk a little bit more about image, um, it enables you to be confident in the variety of settings with a variety of people, to be authentically you um, while putting yourself in a position um, that showcases you and a company the best way possible. Or um, if you are going for an internship or interview, also representing your university. So that's also a thought behind that um, and may enhance your career potential. So first impressions matter. Uh, as much as we don't like the idea that there's bias, there is. It's just very natural. And so people make judgments about you within the first few seconds, first few minutes. So what do you do? What do you do in those cases? If we were in person, I would make you practice a handshake. Um, what does a firm handshake look like? Are you, um, are you gripping too hard? Are you, uh, is it a little flimsy? Practice a handshake um, right now with COVID. 
handshakes might not be a big thing. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, it might be a fist pump um, or an elbow, but kind of look at the culture of the companies that you're working with. If there is still a handshake, how do you do that? Um, but we, we will hopefully come back to a world where we can have handshakes. And so being able to do a firm, very confident handshake the idea of body language as well. Body language is big. Are you leaning in? Are you actively listening? Are you making the eye contact? So in a virtual world, like we are in right now, are you making contact with the camera of your um, computer? Because that kind of shows whether or not you have, um, whether or not you're paying attention. Let's put it that way. And so are you making eye contact? And it's very odd, especially in a virtual world where the screens and the faces might be on the right side or on the bottom of your screen. So you're looking at people's reactions, but as people look at you, you might look like you're looking down or looking away. Uh, so being mindful of that body language and your impressions, whether it's virtual or in person and grooming um, tell, uh, tell professionals a lot about you. So did you groom? Did you take a shower that day? Um, did you, you know, do your, do your best to present yourself um, the most authentic way possible? Um, but also being mindful of the people that are around you. So. Um, I hear this a lot, not putting too much uh, cologne or perfume on because you don't know who's around you. So being mindful of the people around you and who you're going to be. And then a big thing is in your um, first impressions and in introducing yourself, remembering to introduce yourself because not everyone knows who you are, especially when you're coming into a workplace, being able to say hello, having that elevator pitch of who you are. Um, especially if they ask, but being able to confidently introduce yourself. One thing I have seen time and time again is um, in terms of professionalism is being able to arrive on time, whether that's on time or early. Uh, that is for an interview, that is for a job, anyway, anything that you're doing, um, you might think, hey, in class, I could kind of sneak in. It's kind of not the same way in the workplace <laughs> that you could just sneak in. So always um, plan ahead, arrive early um, or on time to meetings, especially because you want to respect. And I didn't know that was one of the words that was used for um, professionalism. You want to respect other people's time um, as well as uh, being respectful to yourself as well. And so if you are running late, whether it's your supervisor or someone in that meeting, or if it's HR, if you're going for an interview, let them know ahead of time that you might be running a little late. That's just um, courtesy, common courtesy. And then workplace attire. This has changed over the years. <laughs> and so what I like to say is, Dress appropriately for the industry that you're going towards. Um, so in the workplace, do your research. You can go on glassdoor.com. You could look at their company website. Um, you can even ask your supervisor or HR how um, typically that company dresses or even that division. So. I know um, I've been at PacSun before in their offices and people that are in the arts or doing some of the designs, they might be dressed down. Some of them even came in wetsuits. That was just a norm. Yet the people that were in their finance and business office, they always came in with a suit. Different, same company, different divisions. So you wanna maybe do a little bit of asking, um, do your research. Check also if there is a company attire policy. This is even um, true for uh, those that are interviewing. See if the company has a you know, company attire policy. Hey, it's Jeans Friday. You know, if you're coming in Friday that you can wear jeans. Um, if, you're to do, if you're thinking, I 
what do I dress up in an interview to show I'm a professional? You always want to dress up. Um, but again, do your research because you don't want to be in a three-piece suit in a tech company that everyone wears jeans. So you want to dress up, but you also don't want to be over and beyond. So look at what your boss is wearing or what your boss's boss is wearing and dress for that position that you want in the future. So that's my little thing about workplace attire. <laughs> workplace communications, email. This is big. Business email should always be of formal languages. Include salutations and a closing. So dear so-and-so, hello, their name, whatever in the beginning, and then best, regards, and then your signature at the end. Uh, I see this a lot in uh, even student communications with me or communications with me um, in terms of like recruitment. Oftentimes they won't say hello or use my name at the very beginning. They might not even sign their name at the end. And that's a tall tale sign of just um, the time that they took and how serious they are about the job. Uh, another thing that I have seen is subject line. There are times where, whether it's a student or another professional, that they don't put a subject line. And that is something that you want to do in terms of your email. So if you're emailing an employer because you're following up from an interview, you want to still put a subject line. And it needs to be short and specific. Follow up from, you know, interview on whatever date or whatever position. You want to use short paragraphs. You don't want to go on and write. It's easy on email to write very long emails and not realize that they're long. And then when it's printed out, it's like three pages. Um, so be very mindful of what you're writing, the reason you're writing it, right? Explain who you are if the recipient doesn't know you. So introduce yourself. Again, just like what I mentioned earlier with introductions and that first impression, in an email, especially if you are emailing to someone very new or even at, if you're emailing HR or a recruitment person uh, about your interview or about um, your application where you are, the status, you want to always give a little bit of an introduction of who you are, especially if they don't remember you and you don't have an email thread already. Don't use abbreviations or um, emoticons, not the place to do that. Uh, that's save that for other um, means, whether it's a text message, but really in a professional world, try to minimize that and then consistently check and respond to messages. And so one thing I have seen is in any professional, you want to check your messages throughout the day. You don't want to just look at your email at the beginning of the day and maybe at the end. Um, emails do come through quite often, so you want to be checking throughout the day um, in a workplace. And then respond. For myself, I give myself a certain time limit to be able to respond, even if I just say, thank you for your email. I'm not sure about this answer yet please give me a, some time to look into this or some time to connect with someone else on my team so that you don't leave them not knowing what's happening. And so even a small response like that, I would do within a certain amount of time. For me, it's always 24 to 48 hours. Um, I try unless I'm out of the office. And with that being said, you want to be able to communicate when you're out of the office and use your out of office emails as best as you can. Um, also, if you are um, emailing from a student email or your personal email to let's say a recruiter, uh, make sure that it's a professional email. So yes, on Sam Smith, at gmail.com, no on make it train at gmail.com. So basically think about um, that is an image that you're putting out there. So uh, make sure that it's a professional email when you are communicating to others uh, on a professional level. 
be careful with the reply alls and BCCs. Uh, know when you need to do that and when you don't. When you need to just reply to one particular person or if everyone in the email thread needs to, needs to know. Uh, oftentimes, if someone is uh, like emailing a huge thread, it's not a reply all unless they say, hey, let the rest of the team know um, through replying all. Oftentimes, get permission before forwarding a message. Um, oftentimes, it's easy to like forward a message on. I like to forward messages from recruiters but they give me permission ahead of time. Hey, you know, share this out to whoever it needs to be shared out to. So be mindful of um, forwarding messages on to other people and always ask permission if you can. And then double check grammar, spelling, punctuation before hitting send. A great way to do this is not putting the email until you're ready to send. After everything is written out, and then you put that email and whoever else needs to be on that email when it's ready to be sent. I have had the unfortunate um, experience of not doing that. So I really like to show um, other students uh, that that's something that you'd want to do. Uh, I did that as a student. I did that as a professional, unfortunately. And it was like halfway written. And it wasn't very professional. And then I had to apologize. So save yourself the, um, the extra effort by just double checking everything and not putting the email right away um, on the top. Something about phone etiquette. So first and foremost, if you're in a workplace, internship, you know, first job, whatever it is, find out the office policy regarding personal phone calls in the workplace. Some may allow it, some may not. So you wanna just keep that in mind. You don't wanna get in trouble. But at work, make sure your phone is always on vibrate or silent. Um, I almost always have my phone on vibrate or silent. So when it goes off, I get really um, flustered <laughs> because it's not something that's normal. So just get into the rhythm of having it on vibrate or silent. Um, answer the phone with a smile and a welcoming tone. Uh, it does come through on a phone call. So if you are, that this is a great advice even for phone interviews, by the way, make sure that you answer with a smile. You're, you're smiling during your phone call. You're, you know, have that welcoming tone because it does um, translate through the phone. Uh, and when talking on the phone with, you know, a current or potential employer, uh, don't put them on hold. <laughs> to answer another phone call, unless it's like super urgent, super uh, something that's out of your control. Um, but even then try not to uh, ever put them on hold. Uh, you can always ask to call them back if necessary. And then your employer and colleagues should be your number one priority. So not your phone calls or your text messages or your emails. So when you're present with whoever you're working with or whoever you're talking with, even during an interview, um, that is your number one priority at that moment. So, you know, those phone calls, those emails, those text messages can wait five, 10, 20 minutes. Uh, something to think about during an interview in terms of phone etiquette, again, make sure it's on vibrate or silent, put it away or don't take it with you. Um, put it in your back pocket, something, but make sure that it does not distract you from the interview. So, and it's not a distracting for the interviewers um, that you're checking your phone. I actually had that happen before an interview where someone was checking their phone while I was interviewing them and it did not leave a very good impression on me because they didn't provide me um, that professionalism or that priority. Um, so that's something to think about. And then when we are able <laughs> to be in person again, and slowly at the university we are, um, treat everyone with kindness and respect. Don't rush to judge, take time to know people, um, to get to know them for yourself, not from what somebody else uh, has said about them, 
get to know them for yourself and be careful with topics of conversation, um, especially with a diverse workforce. Um, just be careful of what you bring up. Be careful of political talk. Know what places that is appropriate and when it's not. And usually in the workplace, you wanna avoid some of those more controversial topics. So personal branding. I'm gonna talk a little bit about social media because that's a lot of where personal branding is and we'll talk a little bit more about others. Um, in your social media, remain professional. Uh, if you have a personal social media site, you may wanna look at some of those you know, privacy settings, make sure that people don't you know, see anything, but even a strict privacy setting, there's no guarantee. So be mindful of that. Avoid posting any inappropriate comments or photos. Employers see that. They, especially if you have an open social media, um, just be mindful. One of the biggest things I like to tell students is Google yourself. And that's the fourth point here, Google yourself. Know what's out there. Know what pictures are being shown of you. Um, you have the opportunity to control that. So be mindful. What is the image? Who do you want to be seen as? What do you want to be seen as? Of course, always authentically you. But what are, you, what are your career aspirations? What are the things that you want to um, be known for? And kind of build that personal branding around that. Use proper language and grammar when you are using social media. Um, you know, not using the actual letter F O R four rather than the number four. If you know you're communicating to other people, little things like that come across. Um, and if you want to say it in person, don't say it on social media. That's uh, that's something. I know some people feel very comfortable with kind of expressing their opinions on social media, but be mindful of what that might translate to in terms of a professional setting and to a per, uh, your career down the line. And so I am looking through questions right now really quickly and I'll address some of those as we, um, at the very end, okay? And so something I mentioned about remote work, remote work is a new venture to many people and in many industries. Some industries have been doing it forever. Tech industry has been doing it for a very, very long time, but others have not. So give graces, one, also, we're in a pandemic still, so too. <laughs> so think about the following. Set boundaries and communicate your work schedule. So whether it's setting boundaries for yourself, I'm only working during these hours, and being able to communicate that on your you know, Outlook calendar or whether you're communicating that on your Zoom, there's a place there where you can say, these are the times that I'm in and out of the office. But being able to communicate that well Yes, that is a work in progress still, but put that mindset there. Um, be mindful of different time zones. Uh, we are now in a global workplace, even in school. <laughs> there, we have students that are not in Irvine right now. And so just be mindful of those different time zones when setting up appointments or talking to other people that, you know, you're being mindful of that, that cultural differences and the time differences that are out there. Choose an appropriate method of communication. So if you need something immediately, that might be more, that might be better as a phone call or uh, you know, a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting, whatever it is, uh, you might need that immediately and it might be long. If it's a really, you know, you need a really quick answer that might be Teams um, or Slack or whatever they're using as almost an instant messaging system. And then when it's something more formal using the email, but 
being mindful. What is the appropriate method of communicating certain information? And if you're not sure, it's okay to ask. It's okay to ask your supervisor. It's okay to ask um, someone that you work with, what is the best way to communicate this information out to maybe some people, one person or many. Be proactive and find out your company or supervisor's expectations ahead of time. I've heard this a lot from uh, different employers is uh, in a remote work, it's very easy to kind of hide away and do what is expected and turn that in maybe, but not even communicate. So that proactiveness and that expectations are all about your communication skills also. So being able to ask and be proactive um, with people. Uh, find out what the expectations are for you as you enter into the workplace. And then video uh, etiquette. I know that some of you um, might wonder about this and I know we just got a question. Remember to mute yourself when you're not speaking. Cameras on um, in a meeting. I know right now cameras are off because of it's a different setting. This is a webinar. Um, but when you're in a meeting, you want your camera on as much as possible and even be mindful of the lighting. Um, so at different times of the day in my house when I'm working from home, uh, the sun hits my face when I'm at my desk and it has this like weird glow. I don't wanna be sitting at that desk while there's like a weird half glow on my face. So I am mindful of that. Um, so think about how that lighting might be and how that comes off. Pay attention and look at the camera. We talked a little bit about this. Don't multitask, it's um, very common to do so. <laughs> um, but when you are in a meeting, you don't wanna be doing that and it's different. And I have asked, um, I have said this and I have had colleagues say this, and I'm writing something down. But again, it's that communication. I'm doing something for this meeting. I'm not just working on a different presentation or I'm not emailing or text messaging somebody um, during this meeting. Um, just be mindful of that. And then test technology. Somebody asked about backgrounds. Um, so one thing I would say is if your natural background can be cluttered or does not look nice, um, considering a virtual background that is not cluttered, that is clean, that is professional looking, is okay for those interviews. I know that, that um, there's a lot out there for Zoom and or other platforms. So just be mindful of the pictures that you're um, choosing to be part of your background and that they're not cluttered, they're clean. The way that they look um, does not distract from you as the interviewee. So just be mindful of that. It's not a distraction in the back. And then so in summary, some of this is common sense. <laughs> But just think about things, take time to think about what, um, what you are portraying, that brand that you're portraying. Being respectful in every case possible. Use manners, thank you, please. And remember to have that great first impression um, out there. So this is the end of my presentation, but I am open to answering questions. And I know there was a question in the chat. Um, what about BCCs? So BCC, I usually use CCs. I don't often use BCCs um, in professional, but if you uh, are sending, let's say to a group of people and you just want your boss to know that you have completed it, or they ask you to you know, send you a BCC or forward you, you can do that. Um, usually BCCs are used if um, you were asked to do so. Hey, send this out to a group of um, you know, clients and BCC so-and-so so they know it's done. 
it's usually um, where you asked. You don't want to use that in terms of, oh, I want to, you know, to stir up gossip. That's not the, again, you want to think through um, what is the purpose and how are you, how does that play into your personal brand of who you want to be seen as? And so you don't want to be seen as someone that will spread office gossip. So um, BCCs often use for um, those uh, those uh, ways as well as, and I like how um, the Sark said, in large amounts of people. So if you are emailing a large amount of people, like 150, um, I think Outlook maxes out at 50, um, something like that. So you don't want everyone to know each other's emails. Um, you might BCC um, that group. But those are, those are a couple ways for you to use BCC. Any other questions? I have a question. Um, it wasn't really discussed today, but I was wondering if um, there's anything on like dining etiquette. Ah, that is, <laughs> I was debating whether or not to put some dining etiquette in there. Um, so things to think about in terms of dining etiquette is um, if you're in a, let's say grad school, um, sometimes they have, dining as part of the interview process. You're there for the entire day, right? And you might be dining with some of the faculty at the end or those that are interviewing you. And so uh, with that, you wait until the you know everyone has gotten their food before you start eating. Um, you want to be mindful of who the host is and um, basically see how the host is responding how they're um, how they're ordering what they're doing, and then <laughs> I don't have my picture, but basically going in, so you know, knowing which one's a salad fork, which one's a some of the um, that dining etiquette, but a lot of it is um, when to start to eat. It, so make sure that everyone has gotten their food, especially on a cold dish. Um, you would hear sometimes at a, on a hot dish, as long as three or four people have already received their hot dish um, entree, then you can start eating. But uh, I would always kind of defer to see what the um, host is doing. So if the host is waiting till everyone else gets their food, may want to wait until everyone else gets their food. And so those are little things. Does the answer a little bit? And of course you could, um, you can set up an appointment with any one of the counselors at the Division of Career Pathways and we could actually walk you through some of that dining etiquette as well. Any other questions? Wonderful. The, um, there was that pre-submitted question regarding um, when to follow up after an interview or post-applying. So here's a couple tips. Uh, after an interview, you do want to send a thank you, and that's an immediate follow-up. So you want to be able to send a thank you to those that you interviewed with. After that, if you haven't heard back and they said, uh, you, you should hear back in one to two weeks. I would wait till that two weeks and then ask what the status of your application um, is after that. Uh, if you are applying and you're kind of wondering, am I gonna hear back about an interview? Am I gonna hear uh, you know, about next, next steps? Uh, oftentimes, if it's on Handshake, they have a close date which is really nice. Um, and I would wait until that close date. If you're not applying on Handshake, you're applying on LinkedIn, Indeed, um, you know, a different website, uh, professional association, then what I would do is 
contact them about two weeks out to ask. You, if you don't hear back again, wait another week or two and then kind of let that go from there. So um, you, after an interview, that immediate follow-up is your thank you. Make sure that you do that. Um, it does make a big difference. Um, a lot of people are like, no, that, that, that's something that doesn't happen anymore. And quite honestly, it doesn't happen anymore. So when it does, it does make a really good impression on the employer and those that are interviewing. You want it short and sweet, not some long drawn out. You really want to hire me, but something about, you know, the interview that you just went through, maybe one or two things that you took away from it and um, a real genuine thank you for the time that they took. So anything else? I have a question for you, Rachel. So yes. I know you kind of already touched upon this in terms of like your uh, social media presence and just online presence, but maybe if you can maybe speak to just kind of the technology that recruiters are using these days um, and just artificial <laughs> intelligence. And it's kind of scary, the digital blueprint that you kind of have online. So I don't know, any advice or tips for, again, for students to be more mindful of what they post? Yes, um, technology is, so every, so every company is going to expect that you have some type of um, online presence. If you don't, they're going to kind of question that as well. Like you're a college student with no online presence. Like what, what happened there? Why is that? So they're going to expect a little bit of online presence. Um, with that being said, uh, you want to you want to look at those privacy settings. I know that I mentioned that earlier. Google yourself, see those privacy settings, look at it from a, uh, an account that um, is not connected to you. So I know like Facebook, you can look at like, what, what does a public account look like? Um, but you wanna be very mindful of what you have posted because um, before you do any applications, before you do anything, uh, you may want to clean up whatever is the online presence that you have and make sure that it's on par to what you want a um, employer to see about you. With that being said, uh, deleting, deactivating might be the case sometimes. Um, that depends on you and your comfort level. Use that security setting first, but yeah, recruiters are looking at LinkedIn. The recruiters are Googling. Recruiters are um, asking people. So, hey, I saw so-and-so work at UCI. I have connections at UCI. I'm going to see what they think about them. So you want to make sure that whatever presence, whether it's in person or online, that you are building that same brand that you want, that personal professional brand of who you want to be known. For. And that takes time, but that's also something that you want to actively work on, even as a student, um, what that brand would look like. And how do you change the perceptions um, if you haven't had the best time building that brand right now, or you didn't think about that ahead of time? So um, those are things just to think about. Um, but definitely Google yourself. Uh, you'll be surprised. Um, also, Google yourself to see who has the same name as you. I had a student in the past who, when we Googled that student, um, a whole bunch of things about incarceration came up. Not that student at all, but was mortifying because if you Google just the name that was on the resume, that, that was all the information that came up. So we're like, how do you differentiate yourself? So we used the middle name. Um, because the middle initial wasn't enough, so we used the middle name. So those are things to think about when you Google yourself. Do I need to use my middle name? Do I need to use my middle initial? Do I need to find a different way to differentiate myself so that I am not being Googled as the wrong person? Because they don't know. They don't know who you are. 
Um, so you want to um, control as much of that narrative as possible. Um, within what time frame after an interview should you send a thank you email? I would say within the 24 hours. You don't want to, I have seen students that have sent it. And I know even um, people that I have interviewed have sent it within like the first 30 minutes. And I'm wondering if that was already prefabricated. <laughs> like they, they wrote something up beforehand. They're sending it as like a mass um, email out as a thank you. Uh, I err on the side of um, be mindful and be thankful for who they are. Put maybe something very specific that you learned from that one particular person so that they know that you took the actual time to listen to them and um, show the active listening. So within, within 24 hours, you'd want to send a thank you email. I actually had a student who I hired as a um, working my front desk uh, in the past. And that student actually walked over several hours later and handed me a written thank you note. Completely impressed. Um, they took the time. They took the uh, added effort. Um, email's great, I, but that extra... That was extra, and that really resonated with me in the hiring process. Any other questions? Uh, I had a question. I know mm -hmm. I didn't cover it within this um, presentation, but I wanna know is, cause I had a group interview yesterday so how would, say if a student applies and they do a group interview, how would they stand out knowing that there's other interviewers who are also trying their best to stand out and make a first impression? So was this for a job that only had one position or was this for like grad school where it was, you know, different? Uh, what I applied for was a spot staffer, so there's a, like a lot of multiple and a lot of spots. So okay. I just wanted to know how that would work out. So there are the reason why I asked that is you can approach it a little differently, right? So um, in the situation like the spot, or in a situation where it's like grad school, you want to think that everyone that you're interviewing with are all on the same team, and that you are all going to get the job. One, that alleviates a lot of pressure on yourself to stand out. And it actually makes you stand out because you're more willing to listen and be an active listener, being able to not interrupt um, when somebody is speaking, to be able to build off of what other people are speaking. So one of the great ways of group interviews and way to show um, that teamwork and that communication skill is thinking, hey, there's multiple people that can get this position. Any of these people beside me could get the position with me. So I'm gonna just view it as we're all trying to get the position together because they're also looking at dynamics between people. They're also looking at how you respond and how the, you know, how the group itself responds to one another do they respond to one another to begin with? So um, in that, if you put that in your mindset first, like, hey, everyone on this panel can be part of the team and we could all be doing SPOP this summer, then that takes away a lot of um, anxiety. And then now you can just focus on, let me hear what they have to say. Oh, I have, an, I have something additional. Rather than trying to come up with something new or something better in your head of um, how do I answer that better than they did? Uh, you, you can come um, at the table more on a collaborative level. Um, and that will make you stand out to begin with because you're not so nervous also. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's true for grad school because a lot of grad schools are doing group interviews as well. So if you're applying to grad school, um, you might come into that same um, 
experience. And so think everyone on this panel, on this group uh, interview could be part of my cohort. So let's just listen because they could be my classmate in, you know, the next quarter or, you know, next year. So I want to be able to listen to their stories and start building rapport because that is part of it. It's your building rapport at the very beginning. Looks like that was all the time we had for questions. Thank you again for joining us today. A special thank you to Rachel for, from the Division of Career Pathways for partnering with us. The School of Social Science Academic Resource Center is available to support your academic endeavors. Uh, schedule a consultation with us today, uh, with us today about your postgraduate plans. Uh, we can also advise you on graduate school, internship, uh, research, and much more. For more information, you can visit our website. I'll drop the link in the chat. So yeah, that was it. Thank you so much again, everyone for coming in. Take care and you have a great day.